Hello, I'm Terry. Some of my earliest recollections, when I was five years old, going back over 70 years ago, is of Perth's public transport system and especially the trains. My primary focus was always the ADG railcars, 18 of which were made by Cravens in Sheffield, England and were delivered in 1954. I can remember them pulling into the Wellspool station painted up in a dark green livery with black and yellow hatching on the ends. I thought that there was no colour photo of this original livery recorded anywhere. To my great delight, one of our Western Australian Government Railway enthusiasts discovered a colour photograph on the State Library of Western Australia's website of the ADG in its original colour scheme, which we posted on Facebook. It's been 70 years since I last saw this colour scheme. As a young boy, I spent many an hour hanging around the Walshpool station, watching these ADG railcars in action. We also had the DD and DM class steam locomotives, pulling passenger trains and shunting. Here we have a DD doing some shunting, although not at Walshpool. The absolute highlight of my day was watching the Australian train on its journey to Bunbury. We see it here about Kenwick. Once it reaches Bunbury, we get a chance to get a close-up of the carriages. In the late 1960s, I bought a Super 8 movie camera and a Philips open reel portable tape recorder. These I took out trackside to record railway action. Back then, home movies were always a silence. I, however, wanted to remember what they also sounded like as well as how they looked. On the 1st of September 1979, the government closed down the Perth to Fremantle rubber line. The week before, I took my movie camera out and recorded the action on the line then. But before we have a look at that, I want to show you some of the action on the other two lines. We will start with the Armadale line first, then we'll have a look at some stuff on the Midland line. First of all, we'll have a look at the Perth railway station before we catch the Yarmadale train to head south. In those days, we bought our tickets from the window outside of the building facing Wellington Street. At the far western end of the platforms, we can see the carriage heads to the right hand side of the main line. Mm -hmm. 
Just outside of the train station, we can see the Perth Central Bus Station in action. Later, changed its name to the Wellington Street Bus Station. In the 1960s, it was quite a regular occurrence to see steam hauling the passenger services as well as coming through on the centre tracks hauling goods trains. This was in the days before decentralisation, where all the country trains used to terminate at per station in the centre of the city. Let's now catch a train out along the Armadale Line. In those days, Claysbrook Station was our first stop. It was originally called East Perth, but was renamed Claysbrook in 1969 when the new standard gauge line was completed, its station being called East Perth Terminal. From the old pedestrian bridge, we get a great look over the rail car depot. The next two are later photos taken at night at the dawn of electrification, when a brand new EMU, that's an electric motor unit, can be seen in the shed before entering service. Let's go back towards the city for about a kilometre and we'll join the cab of an XA class locomotive on a Queen's Park first stop express train. The old XA locomotive bucks about like a draft horse trying to race and pull a cart at the same time. 
Notice that the river to the left of the bridge is clear. In a few minutes we'll see it again, an older version, where the ruins of the previous bridge are still visible. Claysbrook Station to Riffervale Station was originally single tracked. At the time of filming, the dual track has just been commissioned from Goodwood Racecourse to Riffervale. The ballast is brand new, not having enough time yet to be blackened by passing trains. They have not even had time yet to remove the track laying machines. We will now leave our cab ride and return back to Claysbrook to watch the Australian train on its morning run to Bunbury passing through Claysbrook Station. Some of the old drivers I spoke to regard the X-Class as an honorary steam locomotive. Once we pass under the East Parade Bridge, we come to the old East Perth coal-fired power station on the left. They once had their own dedicated electric locomotive, but once that retired, they then utilised the diminutive Z-Class diesel shunter to move the coal wagons. The health and safety rep who hides behind the coal wagons would be having kittens by now. The Austral Inn now goes past the railway road bus depot before thundering down the slope to cross the Swan River via the single track of Bunbury Bridge. As I mentioned previously, this wooden bridge was built as a temporary structure in 1930 to replace the original bridge, the remains of which can be seen to the right of the newer bridge the train is crossing over now. Whilst the Australian train is leaving Perth in the morning to go to Bunbury, we have another train that's leaving Bunbury to come back to Perth. The shopper leaves Bunbury in the morning, crossing the Australian en route, bringing passengers to Perth for shopping. It has a purpose-built locomotive and two matching carriages. Unfortunately, I never got to record the sound it made. What you are about to hear is just a guess on my part. The locomotives were named after Western Australian wildflowers. 
The two I remember are Gravilia and Hovio. Let's rejoin the cab of our XA-class locomotive as we head south as far as Oak Street and we'll have a look at the action there. Oak Street Station was a great place to watch the trains running express between Queen's Park and Perth. Join our XA Class Express train as we charge through Wellsport Station at our top speed of 80 km an hour. Wellsport Station, where I grew up, had a busy goods yard with spur lines going into the old munition works to James Hardy, several lines going to the grain silos, a wheat unloading dock off Seven Oak Street, and a spur line running to the forest field yards. One memory I treasure is the sound the four-wheeled goods wagons made as they passed over rail joints. The distance between the wagons matched the wheelbase of the wagons, so we got a clock-type ticking sound. Tick, 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 tick as they moved along. Our final look at Welshpool is to watch an XB class depart over the branch line to Forestfield before we rejoin our XA class locomotive for the run into Queen's Park. We are now coming into Queen's Park, our first stop. This is Queen's Park. Once we depart from here, we'll be running all stops. Our next station being Cannington, where our next class departs from Perth.
This is the Kenwick flyover where we're crossing over the single track goods line from Kew Dolan Forest Field to the Coburn area. It looks like some young brats have set fire to the dry grass trackside just as the Austerland train bursts through. Stokely Station was built in 1954. Over the Stokely Creek Maddington, it spanned the Albany Highway. It was closed on the 15th of April 1989 and demolished within 24 hours late at night to avoid protesters who wanted it to stay open. Kelmscott Station, where, as we prepare to depart, an ADG set arrives on the opposite platform. As we approach Armadale, we come to a set of points which can change a train from the down line to the up line in preparation for its next journey. We are now approaching Armadale, the end of the line for the suburban trains. The Australind train, however, continues on right down to Bunbury. Here at Armadale, the Australind train we saw earlier has now crossed over from the down line to the up line, setting itself up for the single track working down to Bunbury. Here we say goodbye to our Austral Inn as we turn our minds to the previous generation steam locomotives. The last steam locomotive in Western Australia ran in 1971. Three years later in 1974, the Hotham Valley Tourist Railway, which wanted to preserve the Pinjarita dwelling up line, badly needed some locomotives. Their main challenge was that the dwelling up line has the steepest slope in Western Australia. They chose the W-Class locomotive for its ability to handle this steep slope, with a problem or two in wet weather. The fireman of this dwelling up bound train is laying into the sandpipe with a hammer after first looking down at the driving wheels to make sure the sand is not running. Thank <laughs> you. 
The crew had to cut the train in half and then double the hill. This means that they left half the train behind, which they came back for later. As a promotional exercise, sponsored by the R&I Bank, they brought their newly commissioned steamer W945 to Perth to run special tourist trains. The date is February 1979. This is the first steam train to run on Western Australia metals for eight years. From the Leach Highway overpass to the accompanying sound of traffic, we see and hear our W class approaching, blowing the whistle for the Hamilton Street level crossing in Queen's Park. The following day sees W945 running tender first into Armadale on the first of its special runs. Now the W class utilises that crossover from the down line to the up line that we saw earlier. Then the locomotive runs around the train in preparation for the return journey back to Perth.
If you thought I had trouble holding the camera steady on the X-Class locomotive, that's nothing compared to my brother, who was a fireman on this W-Class locomotive, has holding his handicap steady on his fire-breathing dragon. At the end of the trip, W945 has cut off from the train and has taken off to the siding for servicing. The yellow sign on the smoke box door is RNI. This stands for the Rural and Industries Bank of Western Australia. In the future, it will change its name to Bank West. Here we will leave her and head out along the middle line where we'll also catch up with her later. Once again, we catch up with W945 at Mount Lawley Subway, running tender first en route to Midland. At Midland Junction, the railway workshops are hard at work.
This next footage is very old. It came off a VHS cassette, which was given to me. I have no idea who the owner is. The date would be somewhere about 1960. It shows some very old warriors departing Midland and heading for Perth. W928 is having trouble steaming. The fireman opens up the smoke box door at a station to clean the ash screen inside in an attempt to get the fire breathing again. Goods train headed up by an RA locomotive heading east, coming from Perth or Fremantle, turning south to go to the forest field yards. Now, on our way back to Perth, around the area of Bassendine, we cross the Prospector heading to Kalgoorlie. Once again, W945 is approaching Claysbrook on her way to the city.
this brings part one to an end. In part two, we'll travel out on the Fremantle line, travelling mostly in the Cabernet G, as well as going trackside to see each station. <laughs>